Good evening. This and the next 45 minutes will be make or break for some of Britain's most dramatic crimes. These are some of the people and we'll be telling you what they've done. These are some of the scenes and we'll show you their importance. Get out of the way! And these are some of Britain's most senior detectives along with BBC researchers and they're waiting for your call. Since January, there have been headlines about sex attacks on railway passengers. In just a few weeks, there was a spate of seven assaults on women and children in the southeast of England. Looking back, it seems grim coincidence. There seemed to be no links between the seven incidents, and in fact, there had been five separate arrests. Well, tonight, the hunt for the man responsible for the worst of the attacks. It made the biggest news, but it remains unsolved. That was the attempted murder of a Czech student in the toilet of a train travelling from Sussex to London. And it might not be coincidence that on the same day, in the same area, there was a rape. I was brought in on the Wednesday. She was obviously very ill and she couldn't speak to us. So we had to devise a method of communication by blinking. So I asked her to blink once for yes and twice for no. She had a nasogastric tube, she had a line into her neck, she had heart monitors, and her little face was so badly swollen. She was in this country studying English. She'd been here for three months, and she was working also as an au pair. On Sunday, the 25th of January, the student was going home after spending the Saturday night in Hastings. Now, five months later, detectives still need to trace anyone who saw her here that morning. So far, closed-circuit cameras are the only witnesses. Think back. Were you at Hastings Station sometime around lunchtime that Sunday at the end of January? This is the 11.13 to Charing Cross, stopping at... Warriors Square, West St. Leonard's... Crowhurst, Battle, Robbers Bridge... Were you on the lunchtime train when it left Hastings, and did you see her? Hello. <laughs> she saw a man standing right in front of her, and that's the last thing she remembers. All she did was go to the toilet on a train and she was brutally attacked. Tremendous violence, tremendous force, and such ferocity, such viciousness, just defies belief. I'm just putting it to the loo. Oh, OK. There were only four coaches, and you may recall that very soon out of Hastings, both lavatories at the back were occupied. Toilets are engaged, have to use the one to the front. Oh. Well, that's it. When you've got to go, you've got to go. <laughs> Forty five minutes after the journey started, the violence was over. I saw a pair of legs on the floor, I thought it was a drunk. I wish that I had have actually pushed the door open and gone in. Maybe then she would have got some medical attention that she needed. In fact, she went all the way to Charing Cross and part of the way back before she was discovered. I've been a police officer now for nearly 18 years and I've dealt with numerous cases similar to this one but I can honestly say that in 18 years I've never seen injuries as severe as on this Czech girl. Now back at Tunbridge Wells, it's several hours later. This could be another man entirely or it might be the attacker. Hello mate, when's the next train at Seven Oaks? Seven Oaks, 10 o'clock mate. He was Ten. a bit drunk. Oh, where's the nearest pub? He was a bit red right, in the face. So, we just told him directions to the pub. Uh, 
Hello. I'll get you a drink. No, I'm fine. I've got one here. Thank you. The thing that seemed to be very noticeable about him was the fact that he was very tactile. Oh, why are you wearing it, Mason? It's cold. Keep you no, warm, wouldn't it? Eh? Quite warm enough, thanks. Eh? He had the sort of number two cut, so from Clippers. Um, slightly boarding, but not very much. I asked him where he'd come from, and he'd said Seven Oaks. So we'd established his name was George, and he'd come from Seven Oaks. And at some point, he mentioned about either being in Hastings or coming back from Hastings or going to Hastings, and a wife and a daughter, and he wasn't allowed to see his daughter. Help yourself to a cigarette, why don't you? There was a couple of bits of spittle which remained in the corners of his mouth all the time when he was talking to us, and they didn't disappear. His accent was either South London or South East England. Whether the fact that his pupils were large, I'm not certain, but his eyes were very, very piercing. Around 10 o'clock that Sunday night, a 15-year-old was heading home. She was going to catch the 11.05 from Tunbridge Wells to Hastings. While she was waiting, the drunk in the Bedford Arms had become such a nuisance, the landlord asked him to leave and saw him off the premises. Hello, darling. You all right? You want something to eat? No, no, I don't. Excuse me, there was some bloke outside giving me some hassle. Oh, Just kept on pestering Don't me. worry, love. You come and sit in here. Keep yourself warm, eh? Thanks. What train are you catching? Um, the next one to Hastings, 2305, I think. It's all right. I'll keep an eye out for you. Thanks. Oi, 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 is the last train of Seven Oaks gone? Yeah, five minutes ago, mate. Oh, can I swap that for a taxi? No, of course you can't. <sighs> what are you kidding? Was this about giving you hassle? Yeah, that's him. When the train arrived, the man made no movement to get onto it. It was going in the opposite direction to Seven Oaks. But when the girl got on, he made a sudden dash to follow. And the station staff had to get the train to make an emergency stop. What's happening? That man's just got on the train, love. I told her to go straight to the garden, okay. sit by the garden, and then I so I'd let the train go out and carry on with the work. The girl did spend much of the journey with the train guard and got home to Hastings sometime around midnight. Were you at Hastings station then? A black man with dreadlocks was approached by the man from the train. Soon after, near the seafront, the 15-year-old was raped. This is an e-fit compiled by the victim, mid-thirties with closely cropped receding hair. Is it the same man as the e-fit compiled quite separately by the Checo pair? I wouldn't want to see anybody else go through the pain that that family's been through. It was awful to watch that their little girl, albeit she was 19, she's still their little girl, and she was suffering and they could do nothing. And meanwhile, this man is at large and he could do it to somebody else's mother or sister or daughter. And that is a frightening thought. Carl Skipiet, two attacks. Do you believe that they were committed by one and the same man? Well, that's what we'd like to find out, really, tonight. Um, the similarities between the descriptions is, is very close. And when you bear in mind also the fact that uh, these incidents happened within a, a number of hours of each other and uh, in the same area, the same location, Hastings, and within the railway environment is, is involved as well, that we are looking closely at the fact that they may be uh, connected. Mm, now, the Czech student was so badly injured that it's only recently that she's been able to give you any description. It is. It's, uh, it's nearly five months now since the attack, and she did suffer quite uh, appalling injuries uh, and uh, has still, still suffers brain damage. Mm. Um, but she did manage to give us a description of the attacker. And how did she describe him? She described him as um, white, Five foot ten, mid thirties, of medium build, but she describes him as being powerful. 
Uh, his hair was receding, but very closely cropped and brown in colour, and he was wearing a wine washed out coloured jacket. Now, given the violence of this attack, the extreme violence used, do you think it was a first offence, or do you think he's done this sort of thing before? No, we're, we're convinced that, uh, that this man has, uh, has committed crimes before this, and probably against women. And you believe that this attack happened quite early on in the train journey? We, we do, yes. Um, we think the, the man got out of the train cubicle, um, the toilet cubicle rather, at, uh, between Roberts Bridge and Tunbridge Wells, and he probably got off the train at that time as well. So all those stations in between are very significant in your inquiry. They certainly really. are. Now moving on now to the girl who was attacked in Hastings, she believes that she was attacked by the same man who approached her at Tunbridge Wells. What's the significance, what information do you have on this man? Well if that is the same person at Tunbridge Wells and at Hastings, and, and there is some doubt as to whether, whether it is the same person, um, he did give away a lot of clues as to his identity whilst at Tunbridge Wells. He gave his name as George. He said he had a wife and child in Hastings. Um, he said he, he lived and worked in the Seven Oaks area and he had in fact been to Hastings that day. Um, if he's to be believed, he's left a lot of clues. Mm, and briefly, what was his description? His description was he was white, five foot eight inches tall, mid-thirties, with receding hair which was closely cropped and brown. Um, what are you hoping for tonight? We really want to find out whether these two incidents are linked or not. Uh, and certainly in the case of the, the Czech girl uh, who was attacked, the, the actual savagery and brutality which this man showed towards her, um, we think that there must be someone out there who, who knows this person, uh, whether it's a loved one or yes. whatever. Well, if you have a hunch, if you're a wife, girlfriend, relative, you have a hunch, you know that this man lives in the southeast of England, he's very familiar with the trains, and he perhaps has a history of violence, there can be no decent reason on earth to protect this man. So please, if you have any clue, any information, do ring. 0500 600 600 is the free call here to the studio, where detectives and BBC researchers are obviously anxiously waiting for anything you can tell us. Or call the British Transport Police on 0171 387 0354. That's 0171 387 0354. In fact, we had a hugely successful month since the last Crime Watch. 14 arrests on 11 inquiries, most with help from Crime Watch viewers, at least seven of them as a direct result, and more arrests, perhaps several more, are imminent. For example, on the appalling rapes in Streatham in South London. Women were attacked in their flats and raped. But we had security video of a man using one of the women's stolen credit cards. Helped by 200 calls, Detective Chief Inspector Sue Hill has what she calls a breakthrough. And Crime Watch viewers gave key information on the thieves who rented homes and then ransacked them. One man's been arrested. But despite a lot of calls, no arrests so far on the lone robber who shot and nearly killed a security guard in Bradford. Come quick. There's a robbery going on out there. This man must be caught. If you recognise him or you can help in any way, 0500 600 600 here to the studio. Or call Crime Stoppers anonymously on 0800 treble 5 treble 1. Watch out in Britain or in Italy for this man, Giovanni Tumino. You may have seen him when he worked at Kentucky Fried Chicken in Kilburn, North London, but he suddenly disappeared. About the same time, a Spanish girl he knew was savagely attacked. She was battered, chased out of her flat and through the streets, stabbed, strangled and left for dead. Giovanni Tumino sometimes calls himself Luca. He's 25, slim, athletic, fairly short at 5 foot 6, with brown eyes, a prominent nose and jet black hair. Remember his face. If you've seen him, call us right away on 0500 600 600 or call the local police direct on 0171 232 6133. That's 0171 232 6133. Look out too for this man. He's been charged with sexual assaults against children and was sent to a bail hostel awaiting trial. But he vanished shortly before he was due to appear at Newcastle Crown Court. He's Eric Stobart, balding, around 40, 5 foot 10, but heavy set. He has a Tyneside accent, smokes and drinks, and often has earrings in his left ear. But more distinctive are his tattoos. He has almost 30 of them, several on his hands and fingers. On his right arm, it says Eric OK, and on his left, Eric United. So if you see him, you'll know it's Eric Stobart. 0500 600 600, or you can call the Incident Room Direct on 01661 861 847. That's 01661 861 847.
Now, a truly sickening crime, the sort of offence that no one, even habitual criminals, are going to tolerate. A pregnant woman who'd taken a lift in a car was raped, hit with a hammer, suffocated and abandoned semi-conscious here at Bruce Castle Park in Tottenham, North London. There were two men involved in the attack. One, the driver, beat and raped her. His passenger simply watched. They'd picked her up on the Seven Sisters Road in a small, light-coloured four-door saloon or hatchback. Well, this is the passenger at a petrol station opposite St Anne's Police Station in Tottenham. It's a Saturday night, shortly before midnight, two months ago, the 11th of April. For what it's worth, this man called himself Ali, and the victim thought he might be Turkish. He is short, he's about five foot five, and he seems to be in his late 30s. The driver was younger and slightly taller, in his 20s, between five foot six and five foot eight, and he spoke good English with a slight accent. He also had a tattoo, possibly of a bird, between his thumb and his index finger on his left hand. Now, the victim's injuries were terrible, but thankfully, her baby has survived. If you have any suspicions about who her assailants were, don't hesitate to ring 0500 600 600 or call the incident room on 0181 345 0737. That's 0181 345 0737. While some crimes get worse, others, like highway robbery, for example, have become extinct, or at any rate, almost extinct. On Easter Monday, April the 13th, the gang in East Sussex resorted to an age-old practice of stopping travellers at gunpoint on the open road. But this was a specific ambush. They were after takings from caterers at Plumpton Races. It was very, very busy because it was Easter Monday and the whole race course was packed. Everybody was having a good time. They had nice food and plenty to drink. In fact, they had quite a lot to drink. <laughs> and all I wanted to do was get home, put my feet up and watch the second part of coming home. Later that evening, half a mile down the road, there was a curious accident at the Half Moon pub, noticed by a barman as he arrived for work. Someone had left a Vauxhall Astra in the car park, but without the handbrake on, and it had slowly rolled forward and was now stuck fast in a ditch. It was at the end of the day when the racing finished, so you started to lock up the outside gates. Uh, that's, that's part of my job. And thought I'd just lock the top gate because it was a little bit out of my way, and I thought I'd get that done while I could. And as I drove up, right in the entrance, there was a white car. I was annoyed because I couldn't lock up, but it meant that I had to come back later on. No, but I'm right. I know I'm right. It's better to Okay. Shame up in this Coronation Street. It's getting dead exciting now. Deirdre's been banged up. Oh, it's really? Yeah. Yeah, I was in that rotten swine of a boss. Yeah. Oh. They'll, he'll get found out, you see. They won't keep her in there for long. Say, it is. Well, well, well. Oh. The boy racer said, oh, I'm going to blow up a minute. Where's he coming? Where's he going? Get out of the car! Get out of the car! Get out of I'm the getting car! Out. I'm getting out! Lie in the ditch! I'm, where's the box? What? Where's the money? In the boot! <laughs> Stay in the car! If you value your life, Get down there, get on the floor and stay still. Do not move. Don't I felt at that time that probably this was my last birthday or I'd ever see. Stay in the car. The bloke was so, so angry that um, I think if we hadn't done exactly as we were told, he wouldn't have hesitated to use the gun. Don't move. I said don't move and don't speak. Quiet. I was actually frozen the to the spot in the car we were told to lay down all I could see through the center then was the car and the number plate so it seemed the easiest thing to do was just to memorize it lie down I don't want to see your face stay in the car I thought there was a crash and then the, I saw we had a gun it was like surreal go, go. <laughs> I don't know! I don't know! Oh, 
I was very shocked. You just don't think like, something like that's going to happen to you, um, especially Plumpton of all places. A car came into the car park, turned its lights off, which is a bit strange because nobody does that usually. And I could see there was somebody sitting in the back. And he had dark hair, quite a long face, between 20 and 25. And he had a dark jacket on and his hair was medium length. The robbers make quite a hash of things. They got only a few hundred pounds and presumably they lost their intended getaway car. That Astra had been stolen four weeks earlier. The Orion had been stolen from Brighton on the morning of the robbery, Monday, April the 13th. It was abandoned six miles from Plumpton at Ditchling Beacon. John Goddard, an inside job? Uh, what is it? It certainly looks like a local job, doesn't it? Yes, indeed. These robbers were very well prepared and they knew an awful lot about the course itself and also where the money would be and the people involved and the car that they were going to use. So if they didn't come from the area, I mean, this is quite close to Brighton, isn't it, Plumpton? That's correct. They either came from the area or certainly would have been seen in the area quite a bit, wrecking it and, and planning it. Certainly we feel they spent some time in the area or they knew it very well. Now, the guy who got a description of and gave that description during the reconstruction, he's one who would plainly have been seen then. These people around Plumpton, Brighton, that area, should look out for this guy. That's right. Um, the description we've, we've given um, and the photo fit that we've issued is obviously perhaps a local or has been in that area several times and may have been seen by members of the public. He's you, the person we're after. You've brought some, some clues. These keys, which are apparently very similar to a whole bunch of keys or bunches of keys that were taken, what's the importance of these and how can people help? Well, during the robbery itself, um, several keys were taken for the race course and they have distinctive labels such as the ones there, but they will have written on them the names of the race courses and what door so or... So you don't just want keys that people have found. If these fobs don't have the name of race courses, are you not interested? That's correct. No, indeed. Now, the cars that were taken, one, of course, the Astra, was the one that they parked rather, rather badly. That was stolen four weeks before. That's right. It was stolen uh, three to four weeks in Brighton. Do you know where it was kept? No, we don't, and that's what we'd be appealing for tonight. And, of course, somebody might have seen it being put at the Half Moon pub when, when it was left there. That's on right. The day of the robbery. We'd like to know from anyone that might have seen it being dropped off or might have seen it parked nearby. And the Orion itself, the, the white Orion, that was stolen on the day of the robbery, as we said. What might people have seen of that? Again, the interesting point in relation to the Orion is that the car seats, the child seats in the back, were thrown out of that vehicle at some point during the evening under the grass verge. We'd like to know from anyone that might have seen that. Well, pretty memorable if you did see it. And, of course, it was uh, Easter Monday, which is a pretty memorable date, Monday the 13th of April. Very serious crime, this firearm was used. Help if you can. Here are the numbers. 0500 600. That's a free call straight here to the studio. And the incident room is on 01323 412 299. Eastbourne number 412 299. If you run a hotel, you might be keen to see this young lady, though preferably not as a guest. She books in on someone else's credit card details and then leaves without paying the bill. She left behind this photo taken at one place she stayed. And this seems to be her boyfriend. They may well be Lithuanian. They both had a foreign accent and they made phone calls to Lithuania from their room. Among other things they left behind are documents with these names. Inga Palavichute, which might be her, and Marius Bobina, which might be him. There are also some antibiotics prescribed by a hospital in London under the name of Erti Lengabinite. We know they've been in Cambridge and possibly in Port Reith in Cornwall, but the two of them might be anywhere tonight, perhaps seeking temporary work. They're both around 20, he's 6 foot and she's 5 foot 6. 0500 600 600 or call the local police on 01223 358 966. That's Cambridge, 358 966. Now, last August, a wallet was stolen from a pub at Red Hill, Surrey. But it now seems that whoever did, did it might have been responsible for a lot of other similar crimes, including thefts from offices. A credit card from the wallet was used here at the Lloyds Bank in Red Hill, and later at another Lloyds branch in Rygate. Detectives need to trace this man. Who is he? He's in his late 30s, stocky, with brown balding hair. Do give us a call on 0500 600 600 or the local police on 01737 765 040. That's Red Hill, 765 
040. Well, let's look at progress so far. Getting on for 50 calls on the attack on the Czech student and the rape of a girl in Hastings. 13 names have been suggested, but interestingly, three callers have named the same person. A police officer has also called in, saying he may know the attacker in the, uh, on the train case between uh, Tunbridge Wells and um, Hastings. And interestingly, we've had another call from someone who said that he, she, she saw a man on a train a month later answering a similar description, who was generally making a nuisance of himself. A number of calls as well on Giovanni Cimino, three calls on Eric Stoppard, and calls coming in now as we speak all the time. Now, two separate drugs inquiries. First, we're keen to talk to this man, Mohamed Chenya, about a haul of cannabis. A surveillance operation followed a large consignment of cannabis resin. Officers watched as packages were unloaded at a golf course near Leicester. One of those involved realised he was being watched and made off in a tractor. Mohamed Chenya is 37, 5 foot 8, medium build, and known to visit the Bradford and Gloucester areas. 0500 600 600, or you can phone the police direct on 01788 568 083. That's rugby, 568 083. Now to Warwickshire and another drugs inquiry, this time mainly into the supply of amphetamines. This is Michael William Fenlon and detectives want to talk to him about a haul of drugs they seized and impounded. Mr Fenlon sometimes calls himself Michael Fenton. He's 45, 5 foot 6, slightly built and may have connections in Nuneaton, Bedworth and Basildon. But if you've seen him anywhere, do let us know 0500 600 600 or 01788 568 292. That's rugby. 568-292. You know, one of the great lies about crime goes back to the myth of Robin Hood, that it benefits the poor and takes from the rich. Well, that's utter nonsense, of course, because the rich are usually insulated and they tend to be hit least of all. It's generally ordinary working people that suffer the most, and our next reconstruction is of something that happened six weeks ago today. It took place in Surrey, just off the M25, at Godston, near Redhill. We've disguised several details of what happened to avoid any chance of copycat offences. The first time we saw the van, I should imagine, was on the Tuesday before. And then on the Saturday, we noticed two guys standing by the van. I didn't like the look of them. They just didn't look right. A week after the blue van appeared, Tuesday the 28th of April. It was mid-afternoon. My partner was expected home. And parking is always at a premium. And I became aware of this white van making an enormous amount of noise. I began to think well, whether my car was in jeopardy of being parked immediately behind it. Who scored the first goal in the 97 FA Cup final? I'll give you a clue. It was Chelsea Middlesbrough. I need an answer. Do, 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 do. Roberto Di Matteo. Ah, correct. He scored in the first 46 seconds. All right, here's one for you. Who scored for both sides in the 81 Cup final? Tommy Atchison, Man City. Oh, yes, and he's right again. Hey, Bruce, look at that bloke. He looks shifty. He looked out of place because a lovely warm summer's day. Why did he have his hood up? He was 5'9", medium build, he had a pug face, looked like Charlie Drake, the old comedy actor, a bit younger. Goston Village is a bit well to do. He just didn't look right. Get out of the way! Finished quite early for a change. So it was quite a good day. Got to Godston, hit traffic. I just completely sandwiched in by the two vans. Obviously, we thought, oh, a bit of aggravation, a bit of road rage. Because your mind's working about a million miles an hour. The moment I dawned it was a robbery, was everything you can imagine was going through my head. It's all right, don't worry, it's, everything's fine. I don't matter how big you are, it's just the shock. You, you don't know how you're going to have to react. The hardest blokes can break down like scribbling little wrecks, aren't they, really? As soon as they started bringing them bags around, it was obvious it was a 
the rugby going on. Uh, guns and Roses play. Obviously, weren't going to lean down and turn it down just in case they thought I was picking something up or phoning the police. Bastard, come on! It's all right. Just keep calm. Everything's fine. He was dirty looking. He was quite scruffy, sunken, jowls in the face, sunken eyes. And all through the whole incident, but this guy was just so, so cool. It was unreal. I've looked behind me. Somebody's got out of a van. I thought he was going to have a go, try and stop the others. And then uh, he started loading the bags in. I was lucky I didn't get out of the car and try anything. Especially, I've got a kid on the way as well. I was just shaking, but I was shivering. I was like, just wanted to sit down. And I was there off jollying it up somewhere in the world, didn't they? And I was like, my partner's sitting there stressed out of his mind, worrying what could have happened. Spineless, really, didn't they? There was an added twist of cruelty to the crew that we've not shown. Then, about a mile out of Godston Centre, at Church Lane. I heard this engine running outside, so I decided that I must go out and, and tell the person to please turn the engine off. As I came towards the window, this white van drove up at great speed and uh, another fellow jumped in. He seemed in a great hurry. He seemed to be rather annoyed. Then, a little further on and heading north towards London, a local man on Flower Lane. You, know, you see the same vehicle, you recognise the faces over the years. Some of them become like almost old friends. And all of a sudden, out of the blue, came this brown 7 Series Volvo Saloon. It had a D prefix with a noisy exhaust. Could be that it got a souped up engine. The driver had a ring of thick hair but was bald on top. An innocent commuter or one of the gang? Call if it could have been you. And half a mile beyond that, the white transit was abandoned at Hanging Wood on Ganger's Hill. Well, Dave Cook, this was obviously a carefully planned operation. What do we know about the gang involved? There was about five men involved, possibly with East London accents, all white. Um, we got some good descriptions. They were hanging about in the Godston area for the week leading up to the robbery. We got two good CD fits. The first is a white male with a hooded gap sweatshirt, and he's described as a young Charlie Drake. The second, late 30s, early 40s, scruffy, dirty, with sunken cheekbones. Mm, and other people might recognise them because I think one of the witnesses said they look rather out of place in, in Godston. Yes, they certainly did. Now, it's an intriguing case. What are you appealing for in particular? I would like to know where these vans were, the three vans that we've recovered were, in the month leading up to the robbery. That is from the 1st of April to the 28th, the day of the robbery. And tell us about those vans again. OK, we've got a, a blue minibus. That was in the area of the robbery the week leading up. And it's significant because they've got a cracked windscreen. And then we've got a Luton box van with Raynham vehicle hire on the side. That was the one revving up just prior to the robbery. And then the final getaway vehicle was a white transit, and it was found abandoned in a nearby car park. Now, they left something behind, didn't they, in their hurry to get away? Yes, they did. They left this Kenwood TK361 walkie-talkie. This has only been in circulation for eight months. It costs about £170, with a radius of about half a mile. I would like to know if anyone could tell me if any one or more have been stolen or if they can remember anyone suspicious buying this sort of model recently. Mm. Now, is there an incentive for people to call in a financial reward? There is. There's a £50,000 reward for any information which leads to the arrest and conviction of those people responsible. That's a lot. It is. I would actually appeal to particularly the criminal community to come forward with information which will assist me in identifying those responsible. There was no one hurt in this robbery. I'd like to make sure that these people aren't capable of hurting someone in the future. Absolutely. Well, Dave Cook, thank you very much indeed. Let's hope you're right that they don't and that they are caught. The number here, 0500 600 600, and there are more detectives standing by in the incident room. That's on 01737 765040. That's Red Hill number, 765040. Robbing a nurse is not something to be proud of. So see if you can identify two tall young men who did just that at a bank in Woolworth, South East London. These two teenagers have been hanging around the branch. 
These are pretty good pictures and you'll recognize them easily if you know them. Look what happens next. One of them lunges for the money and they both sprint out, pursued by the nurse. Look at them again. They're both thin and exceptionally tall, maybe six foot four, and they're both about 19. 0500 600 600 or call the incident room on 0171 232 6132. That's 0171 232 6132. Another man we're anxious to talk to is Paul Terence Harkin. Over a year ago, a fish merchant was attacked on his delivery round. He was bundled into the back of a van and, with a knife at his throat, told to hand over money. In fact, the cash was kept in a safe on board and the driver didn't know the combination. He was then driven 50 miles to a flat in Walton Road, Liverpool, and held overnight while the safe was broken into. Paul Terence Harkin is 21 and 5 foot 7. Where is he tonight? If you've seen him, you'll do everyone a good turn by calling 0500 600 600, or you can call the incident room direct on 01253 876611. That's Fleetwood 876611. We've had so many calls on the rape of the Czech student on the train, uh, the attack on her, the attack on the student in Hastings as well. Probably something like 180, 185 calls altogether, including the incident room. To give you some idea, this one's the name of this. Someone says it's, uh, she thinks it's her husband. Uh, someone else, another woman naming a man. This is a, a name that's come up, come up five times now. This one. We have to be very cautious about that. The fact it's come up five times doesn't necessarily mean it's the, it's the right man, but certainly a lot of people are putting the finger on that person. Here again, somebody thinks it's their ex-boyfriend, and a lot more, as you can see, that we've still got to get through here. So this inquiry looks very, very promising indeed. Let me tell you now, though, about a burglary that ended in violence. It's, a, it's an odd crime, this, and for several reasons, not least, of course, because burglars usually try to run away. They very rarely confront householders. But this man got more than he bargained for. He was found one afternoon rifling through property of a house in Peckham in South London. The 12-year-old alerted his mum, but the intruder started kicking and punching her. The noise alerted someone else in the house, who grabbed a pogo stick and beat the burglar on the head. The man ran out, got into a taxi and went to hospital. And here he is, leaving after treatment. Do you recognise him? Now we've got another picture that's even more graphic, and this one is from a travel card that the burglar left behind. 0500 600 600 or call the police direct to the inquiry on 0171 232 7101. That's 0171 232 7101. Still in London, this man's not a nice companion to have. He drew a knife on someone he'd befriended in the West End and stole almost two weeks' wages from him. He'd agreed to meet at the victim's workplace in an electrical store in Oxford Street, and here he is. Now, we often complain about the poor quality CCTV, but this, of course, is unmistakable. So if you know this man, do everyone a favour and tell us who he is. 0500 600 600, or call the incident room direct on 0171 321 9321. That's 0171 321 9321. And now, a treasure hunt. We have the treasure. You can have a hunt to see if anything here belongs to you or anyone you know. Here's Eric Knowles. You know, it never ceases to amaze me, the things that people nick. I mean, could you imagine coming home to find that somebody's pinched your carved wood fireplace, even though it's guarded by a knight in armour? And on top of that, a couple of brackets carved in castles with spelter figures on duty. Now, they could be French or they could be German, but there's no doubting that these pair of figural groups here are German. Look at the quality of the decoration and the modelling and the painting. They said to me, I was made in Meissen in around about 1880. I made in good old Staffordshire in 1835, a Turin covered with its original ladle and printed with a view of luck now. Behind me, a plate that you may be forgiven was saying was Chinese and it's about 1680. In actual fact, it's Japanese. It's a copy, but it is still 1680. And underneath that, what about that for a mirror back sideboard? Um, I've got to tell you, this is rather heavy. In fact, the police are looking for a couple of burglars and they're suffering from a certain medical condition. Uh, but it's covered with uh, carving. Uh, look at the strap work and satires and lions. No shortage of lions. No shortage of lions also on this long case clock. Could be Victorian, it could be Edwardian, but the movement is fitted with a Whittington and a Westminster chime. Now, I can't think of anything worse than somebody pinching your prize stuff fish. I mean, it's been through the wars as this, but it's been around since 1906. It was actually mounted by somebody in Dublin. 
Now, this alabaster carver is a reduction of the real thing, and it gets my vote for being the most, well, it's the most depressing piece of sculpture I think I've ever seen. It's called the Dying Gaul, and um, yes, I, you can take it or leave it. I'm going to leave that, but let's, let's leave you on a happy note. Let's bring a gleam to your eye. Um, let me show you a Louis Wayne watercolour. Um, uh, he's there, he's in full swing. You're face to face uh, with a cat golfer, and I can assure you, it's a damn sight better than being face to face with a cat burglar. <laughs> and if there's anything you recognize there, call 0115-844-6908. A Nottingham number, 844-6908. Or, of course, you can call direct here to our studio, 0500-600-600. Our lines are open until midnight, and you'll see other numbers in a moment. They're also listed on CFAX on page 621. And if you've any information on any crime, try Crime Stoppers. You can call anonymously, if you prefer, on 0800 treble 5 treble 1. And you can email us at crimewatchuk at the BBC. That's cwuk at bbc.co.uk. If you've been the victim of a crime and would like to talk to someone to support, then ring Victim Support Line on 0845 30 30 900. Lines are open from 9 in the morning until 9 in the evening weekdays and 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. at weekends. Calls are charged at local rates. Other helplines are listed on our CFAX page 621. We'll have more news in Crime Watch Update at 10 past 11 in England and Scotland and slightly later in Wales and Northern Ireland. And remember the date for Crime Watch next month. That's Tuesday, July the 14th. Talking of the 14th, it's our 14th anniversary. Over those 14 years, around a quarter of a million people have rung with information. And there's no doubt thousands of serious crimes have been averted. Crime Watch works because millions of people are watching, ready to help if they can. All in all, it's not a bad world. Don't have nightmares, do sleep well. Good night. Good night. Okay, thank you.